Hi friends, it's Donna with Past and Pages. I am really excited about today's video and getting started on this How to Make an Abandoned House Junk Journal series. So today is just an introductory video. If you're new to my channel, I'm going to show you what an abandoned house junk journal is, um, explain a little bit about it, and let you know what items you need to make your journal. So I have been collecting and gathering and coffee dyeing and all of that so that we could get going. So if you're new to my channel, this is what, um, two examples of abandoned house journals. Um, this first one is the very first one I made. Um, and I was really going for what could I put in here that looked like it came from, that looked like it would have been found in an abandoned house. And I do have some journaling in here that I'm trying to um, not show. But, um, yeah, what kind of things would I find in an abandoned house? So... It was so much fun, and it seemed like people enjoyed it, so I kept making them. So this was the first one, and a lot of times with the first one, you know, that's where, I don't want to say you really make mistakes, but you make stuff, and then you make it, and then you see how you want to do it different. This was actually one of the first covers I made. I do have a video I'm going to link in the description box below that shows um, how I made my the, the first cover. It was a wraparound, and we're not going to make wraparound covers. We're going to make just these where you measure it out, and then you fold it in half. So, um, but I was inspired by Tracy Fox. I was kind of knowing that I wanted to do an abandoned house journal and when I saw how she did a really tattered um, piece um, of fabric I decided that I wanted to use that as the cover and it I didn't do it exactly like she did it I did it similar to get my effect but anyway I'll link that video in the description box below in case, I mean, you don't need to watch that video, but just for reference, if you would like to, while you're waiting for me to come out with the next video, you could do that. So, <clears throat> this one was my first, and so I kept it because, you know, the next one I made, there was the things that I wanted to change, I did. So, this one is more in line with what the last ones that I made and sold were like. Um, so I did make some changes once I started on these last ones. They just kind of evolved, but I think that happens. But And actually, I've got new ideas too, but I'm going to try to keep it reined in and keep it on, the, <laughs> on these because I'm... Mm. I could just really get off on a rabbit trail, but I'll try to tell you some options of things you can do. So this is, this is, we're going to make one similar to this. I am going to be using red ticking uh, in the series, but today I've got blue because my red ticking uh, got a coffee bath and it's drying. So this is similar to what we're going for. They all look a little different, but um, the... Things I used in this one is, you know, how we're going to be doing it. It's pretty much the, I don't know what you want to say, the pattern for what we're going to be going for. And I don't know how detailed I'm going to be able to get in the embellishing part. But I will definitely, you know, get you going. And then you might have to use your creativity for because these take a long time to embellish a long time 
but I'll give you the cover. I'll give you how I do my signatures. I'll definitely show you how I do the, what I do about the fabrics um, in here. And then you can go from there, I think is how it's going to be. So let's get started on your layers, the items you're gonna need for the next video. So the cover is made of five layers and I do recommend a sewing machine. It's probably possible to quilt it by hand. Um, if you guys are hand quilters, you will know more about that than I would. I, I did make some decorative pillowcases to put on like a, a decorative pillow, not a sleeping pillow, back in, I don't know, when I was 15 or 16 or something, but I really don't remember how long that took because I did it, I did quilt by hand then. So anyway, use your judgment and go by your expertise and your experience and what you know, but I, I use a sewing machine. So the first layer of the, is going to be your ticking and it's going to be about 12 and a half by nine, um, because I'm going for a six by nine and like this one I did. 12 by 9 and then it makes it to where once you put your signature in and start embellishing then it takes some away from the so it ends up being like less five and something five and three quarters or something so about 12 and a half will give you some wiggle room so you can get this fabric at Walmart and feel free to use what you have if you don't have this but you have something else that's similar uh, thickness use it but I get this from Walmart I also had a friend to send me some and there's several choices you get the blue this this one's coffee dyed you get blue you can get tan stripe you get red stripe um, and then there's a like this kind of off white color that they have as well and I love this fabric for these journals so this is what I use but feel free to make substitutions and use what you have then I use a piece of cotton cotton batting and I get mine from Walmart usually and I will use this type or this type either one I think this one's a little cheaper and I get that a lot, but whatever you have that you want to use for batting, I can, I would imagine if you had a really old tattered quilt, you might could use that. Um, just all kinds of different things, maybe a piece of felt, different things that's possible, but I'm showing you how I do mine. So then you need a piece of printed cotton. I usually just use thin piece of cotton printed fabric. In the early days, I used Tim Holtz Abandoned Fabric um, here and here. Um, nowadays, I usually use something like this. It just depends on the direction the journal is going. So, oh, about the cotton, cotton batting, you want it a little smaller than your piece of ticking. And so... Um, and when I say a little smaller, just a little. So like this, these sides are probably a little smaller than I'd like. Really close. You want it to be really close. Probably about an eighth of an inch, I would think. Maybe something like that. But just kind of look at it and just, I kind of eyeball it. Just a little smaller than this. So that when you fold it, the batten is not sticking all out and all that. It's going to be inside. And then this needs to be the same size as your ticking, which I made this, I cut this piece too small. Then you're going to need a piece of coffee dyed cheesecloth. Now this, I usually make a little bit larger so that once it's sewn, I can just cut that really easy. So <clears throat> that, that works really well if it's a little larger. And then you want a piece of plain 
fabric it's preferable if you have fabric that tears easily so like this is a piece of sheet fabric and i'll show you this came from this same piece and you can see how easy that tears you don't even need scissors to get it started that's what i like for mine um because you're gonna go after this tattered look and not all of it is this i don't distress them all that to that degree but if it's easy to tear, it helps a lot. So that is going to be your layers. I will put a list in the description box below. So you'll have to keep watching the video. If you don't want to, you can just keep looking at the, the list and gather your supplies. And like I said, I do coffee dye mine. Um, and the red is drying because I put that in a coffee bath today. So you can tea dye, you can walnut, distressed, whatever what you want to do with it. Just, I like mine distressed, and so you can use your own judgment. So when you're embellishing the cover, some of the things that I use to embellish my cover, once I get it together, and I'm hoping to get both of these steps done in the next video. So I have a bowl of coffee dyed pieces of lace and fabric, and some of it's not coffee dyed, and little bits of lace, and just bits and pieces. I stocked up on these because I got I went I was out when I went to one Walmart. They didn't have it. Luckily, I have four within 30 minutes of me, so I'm able to. I was able to find some. So I, I use these sometimes. If you don't have them, I, I've made many of them without it, but I have used them. So those are things I like. You can use book text. You can use stamps like um, rubber stamps, cling stamps to stamp text on fabric or paper. I do use paper in some of the covers in the layering. That's Tim Holtz fabric there. But like here, use paper, book text. You could stamp. Um, this is salvage from Tim Holtz abandoned fabric. I loved it. And so I wanted to put that. This is um, Tim Holtz sentiments. I use those sometimes. So anything like that you might want to put on yours. And then for the this photo itself, this is a book page. I've used magazine pages, book pages. Um, I have a collection of magazine and book pages with abandoned house images for these um, projects and you could also if you're out and about and you run across one and you can get a picture I have pictures on my phone of ones that I take as I if I'm going somewhere and I run across a new one and I can get off the road and be safe about it and I don't go to it but from the road take a picture um, and you can kind of zoom in and then and blow it up, whatever you crop it, ever what you need to do. And then you could use that photo as well. I was also really, really hoping somebody would come up with printables for these um, photos. For these, you know, so I could use a printable instead of a book page. But um, I did run across one on Instagram. It, I think it's called Painted Shacks. It's by Sweet Pea Curiosities, and um, I don't know much about printing. I don't have a printer. I had to have these printed for me, um, so it's because we don't have internet. It's not because I don't have a printer. I mean, I don't have a printer either, but I don't have a printer because we don't have internet. Anyway, um, so if you can change the size of these, I think that would be great. I don't know if you can or not. I guess I should have contacted her and asked her if the if you can change the size of them. But these are gorgeous. They're really gorgeous images. And I do have another project, thankfully, to use them on if they don't work on the cover of my abandoned house. But these are like full size um, photos, big photos. It's possible you might could fold it and, you know, maybe trim here, trim there, trim it. It's possible you could use some of these for that. Um, 
but if you can adjust the size, I would think that would be best because it's just, it's really kind of big for the cover and I don't know enough about it. So I wanted to mention these to you guys. You'll have to use your own judgment. I don't know. I have to, I have to get to that place in my in my project before I can say make up my mind. So and because I'm not there, it's hard for me to really know if I'm going to be able to make any of these work at all. Um, but I do have another project that's not abandoned. That's not junk journal related that I am going to use these for if they don't work. There are some smaller ones, but then they're kind of too small. I'll show you those in a minute. I love that one. Oh, that's awesome. Y'all, I'm obsessed with abandoned houses. You don't know how many. I've got abandoned house um, photos on the wall, photos on my phone. I just love them. Just love them. And there's several reasons for that, but I'm not going to get into all that. I'm just wanting to show you guys some options. Here is um, the ones that come with that. And these are kind of small for the cover. That would be probably too small for me. I, about a five by seven, four by six, something like that is pretty, pretty good. And I have used some smaller ones, like this one is a really big one, but I've used smaller ones, but not this small. She also sent me some other ones thank you so much marissa for these extra ones these are closer to a good size and i may would be able to get these to work and these are gorgeous i don't know if she's got these out yet but they are awesome so let's see i'll let you see these i love them so much but I'm just not sure if um, the reason why I'm thinking these bigger ones might work is because you can layer behind it with fabric or paper or whatever. So anyway, I love them. Love, love, love them. This is a good Halloween project, but um, I just love them all the time. And I think on the, I'm not sure, one of my videos I, I went through and told a story of when I was a little girl, um, what first got me so crazy about abandoned houses. So, um, I'll link the playlist so you can be watching that while, um, you're waiting for me to actually get the next video ready. I'm almost, I should be. Let's see, this is Friday, so I'm hoping to have the next one done before the middle of next week. But I am going to give you a little bit of time to get your supplies together, to get your all your fabric and batting and cheesecloth cut to the right size and all of that. So that will be ready for the next one. So I appreciate you guys watching so much. I hope you're doing well. Please like and subscribe. Give it a thumbs up if you love this if you like this video so i will see you soon bye bye